about habitat. Okay, sorry, I forgot to start the recording, so now I did. I have enough information and enough experience in in the design of, of uh, habitats, of lunar habitats, of rotating habitats, of space uh, colonies, and so on. I could, of course, make a webinar in the form of a slideshow or something like this. Yes, but a lot of discussion afterwards, of course. But do you think we we uh, we may uh, invite uh, other speakers or or not? What what is your opinion? Maybe we can invite also one or two other speakers, of course. Yeah, yeah. Even okay. Just to to the to the fine thing. If we make it in the webinar series, then we will have one hour or one or two, maybe three lectures uh, and half an hour for discussion. If we make a, a, a separate conference, then we can have more time. We can have maybe two hours uh, and invite maybe more speakers if we like to do that. Um, so we can do both. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, we can do the, the, the webinar or at a small conference, as we prefer. I, I don't know. Jerry, what is your opinion? What would be better? Okay, well, uh, overall, I, I'd like uh, uh, a longer event. Okay. But I wonder if running a webinar might be a good start because it will um, make people aware of, uh, of the group. Um, and uh, give them some initial ideas and say, right, and come back on such a uh, date and we'll provide more for you and include other speakers. So okay. basically we do both. Yeah. Yes, that that fine. So we can we can have a, 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 an agenda with the uh, a first a first uh, uh, milestone that will be a webinar and the second milestone that will be a small conference. Yeah, yes. and uh, uh, and Julio uh, and I can both um, give presentations at, at the webinar um, and explain what this is all about and. Uh, um do uh, a small presentation to uh get people interested yes 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 great so uh yeah we could have a webinar uh, in which uh, both uh, uh, jerry and werner uh, will present uh, and that will be the first step to toward a, a, a conference a small conference and i have to add that uh, um, in paris at the IAF uh, spring meetings, I participated to the meeting of the Space Habitats Committee of the IAF, and I I, I informed them that we have a, a, a committee uh, in in this in our academy, and that we would like to collaborate, and that we will invite all of them, all, all of the members of the IAF Space Habitat Committee to our meetings so we can uh, we can make uh, uh, and, and, and therefore i think when we will make the small conference uh, we can invite some of them to speak for instance yes. yeah so excellent good so i think we could uh, think about holding a webinar let me check uh, the the calendar Right now, so we have uh, uh, until uh, until August. It is uh, uh, all booked. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, May, uh, June. Okay, I will share it again. Uh, Adriano, I'd like to say something. Yes.
So uh, yes, uh, just let 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 us uh, uh, complete this point, and and uh, okay. so it could be uh, in September. Uh, both the dates of September are available so far, and uh, uh, and of course October. Considering that in September, the 18th of September, we have a panel at the, at the UN uh, General Assembly. Uh, for the um, uh, to add an 18 SDG to the uh, 17 Sustainable Development Goals <laughs> of the uh, of the UN 2030 Agenda, and that uh, in uh, the first week of October there will be the uh, IAC, the International in As Baku. In Baku, yes, in Baku, yes, yes. Therefore, I think uh, we could choose uh, a, a, a date in September. Let me check our internal calendar. Uh, 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 uh. Here it is. Maybe, yeah. Webinar calendar. Okay, so uh, ah, by the way, the eighteen is a Monday. Therefore, it uh, we cannot we cannot have it in in uh, in Monday. I think the first available date for our possible uh, webinar is the sixteenth of October because it will be after the IAC, after everything. So, uh, okay, I I write it here. Uh, Jerry, Stan, and Lerner, Randall, Space Habitats, Committee, Webinar uh, organized by Adriano, moderator Sabine, and we can say confirm it. Why not? We are here. Okay. Yes. Fine. Great. Today is the four. Uh. Yes, Julio, please. Uh, I'm 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 organizing uh, during the last three years uh, event called Space Habitat Event. It's in the last three editions were four days. Uh, there is a call for papers, and the Space Habitat Event. Uh, also, we announced the partnership with Space Renaissance Initiative. Uh, and the, our planning is to organize during the November 9th to, to 12th. And it's uh, the last edition. We have uh, 57 uh, presentations during these events. And also we organize a abstract book. I also I shared it in the, in the chat, the link for abstract book. And also it's a, uh, it, there is a, uh, if you if you like to see, maybe this would be opportunity to to bring more speakers from SRI for this evening. And also now uh, we are planning the the call for papers and also the art for the design to advertise this. And maybe you can do a stronger collaboration about. And in this case, this year will be the the fourth edition. Hello, Marie Louise. Hello. Hi, hi, Marie Louise. Glad to see you. Hi, Oz. Nice to see you. Um, so, when when it when will it be in November? You said, Julio. Uh, nine to twelve. It's a it's a from Thursday to uh, Sunday. It's a uh, four days because we have a lot of abstracts to be meted and. It's like in a panel of one hour, we have four presentations. There's also an uh, online event. Uh, when will it be? 9 to 12. 
No, but oh. where? Where? It will be virtual. In Brazil? No, it's virtual. Ah, it's only virtual. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, it's virtual, yeah. And it is on space habitats. Yeah, on many thematics related to uh, space exploration and also analogy habitats, some experiences from analogy habitats, and also some, some coordinators of analogy habitats doing presentations too. And you can see how we just have like a approach to how to organize this event. And you can do something with more collaboration with SRI members. Yes, yes. Right. So, okay. So you will provide uh, uh, everything about what 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 you what we are expected to do. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe advertising on the website, on the social networks, and all these kind of things, mm -hmm. and of course uh, uh, presenting papers. No, when when is the deadline for the call for papers? It's uh will be like two two months before probably until uh, uh, September the beginning of September will be the deadline and you have more two months to analyze the the submissions and establish the the define the program how it will be and it's uh three hundred words uh, uh, abstracts and also uh, but the launching of the uh, the launch of the call for papers will be the next, probably we'll try until next Friday, uh, but we, we are looking at a design art to, 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 commun to communicate. Uh, probably a landscape from, from moon, uh, a concept of a uh, habitat on moon or Mars, uh, a design about, and I'll look some, some artists to, to co cooperate with us. Yeah. I see. About the drive. Yeah. I see. Uh, nice. Okay. We will try to do our best because I, I understood that this is um, uh, Space on Essence is a, is a co organizer, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Also, also Mar Mar Society Brazil, too. Okay. In other, also the, the, the Brazil universities and also researchers like. Thais Russomano from, from Brazil, living in UK too, and other, but uh, each one uh, from SRI interest to do a, a presentation, we can, we, we can find a, a slot to arrange this, this presentation in our program. Yes, for sure. Okay, you know, this the 2023, our main campaign is the 18th SDG that we will be we will present at the UN and we will uh, present at the IAC in Baku and uh, everywhere we will hammer on this uh, uh, initiative. Also, soon we will have a page on our website to collect signators under our proposal. Therefore, mm -hmm. th that will be a great campaign and we have to collect thousands of signators because we need to have, a, a, um, how can I say, a wait, okay, wait. Mm -hmm. Uh, wake uh, in order to 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 push this initiative as much as possible. We have uh, we have a, a very very good allied. Uh, I already had uh, the uh, confirmation by Frank White, with his Human Space Program uh, initiative. Frank White, you know who is Frank White? Yes, mm -hmm. is, is the is um, uh, the overview effect. Uh, orig originator of the concept of the overview effect, and uh, also we have Rick Tomlinson and uh, and uh, several other uh, 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 agree with us to 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 bring this uh, initiative ahead. So for sure we will. Uh, I would like very much to place a a, a speak a speech at at the at your conference, uh, Julio, on this point. Because I think it's very Adriano, I chose during last years, during September, I, I had visit a lot uh, New York. Uh, during September, during the General Assembly, they promote the Climate Week. Uh, in, during the Climate Week, uh, happens a lot of events, parallel events to General Assembly. 
uh, I don't know how he how is is working the the organization, but uh, would be interesting a partnership with some some professors from some some university from New York uh, to organize uh, like a small event like a a, a a seminar in a in a in a New York University maybe Columbia or other other university would be a good thing. Uh, to uh, bring the disc this discussion during the, the Climate Week, during General yes, Assembly in sure. New York. Uh, sure. but please let me know what, what will be the specific dates that you are, you are planning this. No, it's the 18th of September. Uh, 18th, okay. 18th. And it's a it's a plan it's a, a, a there is some plans for our event or will be meetings or well we don't know we don't know yet because we would like to be hybrid so so we would like very much to be present in presence in in uh, the un premises in new york but uh, to do that we need a sponsor uh, mm -hmm. so uh, the things uh, space on essence is registered in italy we will have to ask to the uh, Italian em embassy at the UN to sponsor mm -hmm. us and giving their room to mm -hmm. us do that. Uh, very good. Very so good. I don't know if that will be possible or not, but we will try. Okay. Yeah. Not if not, it will be virtual. If we cannot do it, it will be virtual. Yeah. Some, uh, of, some of us will be in New York, however. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I can uh, also can contact the Brazilian embassy uh, also to know if possible if they have some room there. Uh, oh, also, yeah. it's very common that during the climate week, also the embassies, the European embassies promote events during the general assembly, parallel events. Uh, yeah. Also, I can contact with Brazilian embassy to see if possible happens, uh, organize something there as a second option too. Okay. Also, you know, your university would be a good thing. Sorry, I'm, I'm just writing something. Uh, climate week. Okay. Good. Um, Okay, so we know uh, Celia is having a problem. I don't understand. She said it, she is blocked. I don't know. However, maybe she, maybe she will join again i don't understand what was uh, the problem so okay um okay so the second point will be to hold a small conference for uh, on the space habitats an online conference of course and i think uh, uh Things also the last quarter is very crowded because we have Baku, we have uh, uh, we have the um, uh, uh, conference in Leiden University in the ne in the Netherlands. Uh, we have this uh, uh, this conference in uh, in um, uh, the, 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 by by uh, made by by Special Nations Brazil and in the Mass Society in Brazil. Uh, therefore, I think uh, we could uh, think about our space habitat small conference in maybe January 2024. What do you think? Could be because I think I think we don't have uh, enough uh, uh, resources to prepare it before. If if we want to make a a good uh, a good uh, job, we we have to think about January. And uh, to prepare it, uh, to invite the people during the, the three months uh, uh, before. Um, okay, so let's think about that. I agree with January, yes. I agree with yeah. Yeah. January because we have a lot of things to do in autumn. So, yes. So we wait until January with the conference. 
in my opinion. Okay, so January 2024. Okay, so we have everything in the chat and, and then it will be useful for the, our minutes of meeting uh, to be prepared tomorrow. Good. Uh, so, okay, these were the premises. <laughs> now I, I want to give the floor to our chair and co-chair because they know what they want to present uh, uh, during uh, this meeting. Werner and Jerry. The meeting is yours. Shall I start, Jerry? Yeah, um, well, please go ahead. Yes, so, okay, I have prepared for this meeting a short slideshow about some new ideas and new informations I've got in recent weeks. So I like to share the screen with a moment. Okay, I hope you can see it. Uh, you make it full screen? I can make it, no, I I do not make it full screen, but I can change the files, of course. Uh, are you able to see it or not? Yes, but it would be better if you can make it full screen. Oh, okay. it's okay. I think it's, yes. It's okay. Okay, okay I, will, I will keep it like this. So um, I have once more uh, made a short overview of, of all types of space uh, habitats concerning also the uh, number of, of, of inhabitants. And I have now, um, made the uh, so-called artificial gravity, I call now simulated gravity in order to, uh, and, 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 and uh, I guess I think that uh, 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 Jerry is, is uh, very happy about this <laughs> thing. So uh, one after the other, we have the current International Space Station. It is working until 2030, and it will be decommissioned uh, in uh, the year 2030 or some years later. It has now uh, approximately from four to 10 inhabitants, maybe some more sometimes. And it has, of course, zero G, so no gravity at all. Then we have, as a second type, rotating orbital stations, either in low Earth orbit or in lunar orbit, or in the Lagrangian points or somewhere else. The inhabitants could be between uh, 24 and 180 approximately, and we can go up to 1G simulated gravity. Then we have lunar bases, either on lunar surface or underground bases. Uh, you are muted, Adriano. Yeah, someone that is not muted has a, a voice in the background. So I, re I recommend yes. To yes. everybody to mute when you're not speaking. OK. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So, muting. Uh, so, um, so the third uh, type uh, lunar bases, either on lunar surface or or lunar underground. Uh, for example, in uh, holes uh, and in lava tubes, uh, they can be inhabited from. Uh, small group of astronauts um, until approximately 1,000 or more inhabitants. And now we have, of course, just one-sixth of the Earth is 
gravity there, it is uh, 0.17 g. Then we can think about Martian bases, uh, maybe about up to 2,000 inhabitants within this century. Uh, it uh, the natural gravity is a little bit more than on the moon, but very much lower than on Earth. Um, then we have rotating colonies inside asteroids. About a, a population of 100 up to approximately 3,000 inhabitants. And there we can provide one G simulated gravity. And of course, last not least, we have the O'Neill type colonies with a possible uh, population of up to 10,000s or more. Uh, uh, Werner, uh, one time and so on. Uh, Werner, sorry. Uh, it's, uh, it's, showing you, uh, it's, it's showing only the first slide. I don't know if you are commenting the other slides, but it's showing only the first slide right now. So this is the second slide. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. Thanks. Okay, this is the second slide. So I have found a paper from two colleagues from Italy. Maybe Adriano will know one of them. It is uh, Mr. Pietro Di Pantero and Mr. Guido Ferretti from the University of Milano. And they have made a paper, a recent paper, uh, which is, uh, but it is uh, based upon a paper uh, from the year 2009. Uh, it is about the arterial uh, blood pressure in low gravity. So this is one of the problems if humans are living in low in the low gravity environment. And I read it for you. The reduced acceleration of gravity on the moon and on Mars, and hence the corresponding fall of the hydrostatic component of the arterial blood pressure reported in table 11.2 may bring about a reduced efficiency of arterial baroreflexes and hence determine cardiovascular deconditioning. However, astronauts pedaling on appropriately designed circular or elliptic tracks may maintain at one and the same time an appropriate muscular and circulatory status. Indeed, when moving along the, the curvilinear sections of the track, the astronauts will generate a centrifugal acceleration and so on. And you, as you can see in the table uh, at, the, at the bottom of the slide, you can see on Earth, uh, there is a ratio between the uh, blood pressure uh, on the carotid that is near the head and on the foot. And this is a special ratio of 0 0.4. Now on Mars and Moon, this ratio is a little bit different. So one can imagine what problems astronauts and humans in general have to face on Moon and Mars environment. Now there may be some, uh, or, uh, or uh, I think uh, just two main conclusions. One is on Moon and Mars, a constant training of humans is necessary to survive. And to avoid uh, meant, uh, 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 some health uh, problems. And the second uh, conclusion is what Gerald O'Neill said uh, some, some many years uh, for space settlement. Uh, of course, we can. Uh, 
prefer the rotating ones. So, next slide. Many of you know my design of a lunar base of a of an initial lunar base from the year 2007. It is made of uh, cylindrical modules. And the two colleagues from Italy have taken this design for their uh, proposal of a cycling uh, track, uh, which is uh, combined to the lunar base, where the astronauts or the inhabitants could cycle across and of course, and the more speed uh, which they have, they can increase the so-called G force there. So this is uh, some kind of uh, training for the astronauts and for the humans there. But uh, as we can see there, for normal uh, humans from Earth, which are not well uh, trained, there may occur some problems for the health uh, on moon as well as on, as well as on Mars. So as the second uh, conclusion, uh, we take the O'Neill type space colonies, which large with large radii, which can provide uh, one G of simulated gravity at all, which is quite similar to Earth. Uh, and of course, the larger the radius, the smaller is the Coriolis acceleration, as we said also yesterday. Now, yes. So these are some thoughts and some new informations I wanted to provide for you. And uh, the main uh, conclusion is that we should focus on so-called artificial gravity or simulated gravity and uh, moon and Mars. I think we have to consider that maybe just a small group of men and women can stay there for a longer time. Yes, this were my few slides. Thank you. Thank you, Werner. Very, very uh, interesting uh, uh, presentation and conclusion. Yes, as we said several things, I think that uh, uh, Moon and Mars and planetary surfaces in general will be useful for industrial activities to go there and work, to, to, to make uh, mining and uh, uh, refining uh, uh, materials, refining processes and production and all these kind of things. And people should stay there for uh, short, uh, so, um, short uh, shifts, and uh, go there to work, and and but to to living and uh, inhabiting, they should stay in uh, orbital uh, rotating uh, colonies. This could be a model that could work because if I if I go, uh, I don't know, one week to work on the surface of the moon. And then I go back for three weeks on on uh, my rotating home. Uh, then I think I I will not I will not have uh, uh, many many problems uh, probably. Uh, so the the, the uh, I I can recover uh, when I am uh, in in a sim in simulated gravity and then go back in reduced gravity to work for for short shifts so this i think this could be a, a working model because of course we we uh, we will need the surface surface of planets uh, for industrial uh, and research uh, 
and exploration and all of these things, uh, uh, I think we, we, we cannot avoid to, to, uh, to be on, on the surfaces for, for short periods. Uh, so, yeah, I think the, the, uh, uh, all, all of these problems should always be considered and uh, analyzed from an, a humanist point of view, from the point of view of, of, the, of the people that should work and live there. And, and uh, not always to, to, to think that people are spendable and uh, you can throw them uh, around uh, in, in any way. <laughs> so, okay, uh, good. Uh, maybe someone else would like to, to uh, present something or to, uh, to make some... Uh I have a, a short presentation about uh, our our activities for for this year. Uh, just a very short, just a ten slides, if possible, I share. If you have this opportunity, <laughs> please. Okay, okay. Let me share. Okay. It's it's about the missions of Habitat Marti. We are based in corner of South America. Uh, we are, this is our program for the analog missions is one week missions happening in Northeast of Brazil. Uh, every month we, we, we are organizing one, one different space analog missions. Also, we just received 10 different countries in our analog missions right now. Uh, next next days we'll be receiving a crew from Mexico, and we started our operation during December of 2017. Uh, and these are some topics about sustainable space exploration, uh, like astronauts' health and and shelter, also food, nutrition, agriculture, water use, environmental life support system, and energy generation. In this case, we are we are operating in the uh, the food production in a closed in a closed area, also using solar panels and uh, and also recycling the sea waste. And this is our location here in is in South America, in the corner of Brazil. In this case, in Brazil, we have different ecosystems, and one of them is a uh, is called Caatinga. It's a semi-arid region. And with a lot of cactus in the landscape, and we are operating here. It's uh, we are. I live in Natal in the coast, but this habitat is 100 kilometers in the couch side. Uh, there is a direct flights from Lisbon to Natal, but flights from America and to Natal, you don't have direct flights. Probably uh, the flights will be stopping in Sao Paulo, from, from Sao Paulo to Natal. Uh, we are creating a, a second habitat. It's called Lava Cave Habitat. It's a completely off-grid habitat. And uh, yesterday I was there, see how is the conclusion of this facility. Uh, in this case, we will be developing the communications protocol between both facilities. Uh, these are the numbers. Also, since the pandemics, we developed a methodology of virtual missions, and now uh, we have almost nine nine hundred participants. And now this year, we are presenting six missions, uh, and also the call for next missions for for twenty twenty three. Uh, and about the women participations, 36% of our participants are women. And these are some, count some countries participating in the, in the missions. And 10 of them, uh, more than 40 countries, and 10 of them uh, in participating in during in-person missions. Uh, this is a photo of a volcano close to us. It's, uh, we did the analysis of the soil and rocks and present as uh, some analog characteristics uh, in the in the soil and in uh, in rocks here yes and here's a we have an instagram very updated where we are sharing the uh, some news about about our activities 
And this is my WhatsApp, okay? And thanks so much. And for the... Okay, great. Thank you. So anyone else? Some I'm research. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, just to conclude. Uh, some researchers can present some some surveys that can apply with analogous astronauts during the missions. In this case, if, if you have some researcher that would like to do a survey with with our, uh, during the missions, we can we can have a, also Celia uh, contact me about. We have some psychological survey with with participants. If someone would like to think about these possibilities, we will be we can arrange a meeting to discuss about. Okay. Okay. Fine. I would like to do. I I would like to do this. My problem is I have problems with that Zoom. I don't know if you can see me and hear me. <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. We can hear you. Yes. Difficult. But I would like, yes, to participate in the psychological um, evaluations and things in, in, in Mars with you, Julio. Yes, you are very welcome, Silly. We, let's arrange this meeting to discuss the, the possibilities. OK, um, yeah, Julio, I, I would also propose uh, another thing. If you have some uh, uh, online meeting uh, of uh, Habitat Marte or your uh, organization and so on, and you want to invite me, I could hold at just a 10 minutes uh, mm -hmm. presentation of the 18th SDG initiative. What do you think? Yeah, very good and very feasible. Yes, okay. you can you can see one of our net next. Uh, meetings to invite you yeah uh, well now right now we don't have we need to advertise the next virtual mission but uh, we don't we offer right now but we don't have the inscriptions and we will offer again and I will be if you have inscriptions you, I will be invite you to do a, a participation with us as invited researcher excellent thank you so much great thank you so, okay, uh, if we don't have other thing, maybe Marie-Louise, I don't know if you have some something uh, for us. No, so, uh, I, I think uh, you have a very good uh, plan um, to, um, to uh, undertake uh, both um, uh, the, um, uh, the um, colonization of Moon and Mars and also the O'Neill uh, option, I think uh, the combination is a very good idea. Okay. From Werner Grandel. Great. Thank you. Uh, Kaya, uh, Kaya and then Jerry. Okay. Thank you, Adriano. Um, Julia, that was really great. Um, hope we can uh, do some research with you in the future. Um, but I would also like to mention that uh, we also started to, to spam a little bit the social media. We got one PhD scholarship available that is fully funded. And I wonder um, if there is um, an option to advertise this with our members, if anyone knows anyone. So I just, um, I'm gonna share this in a chat. So we are basically a university in Melbourne, Australia and partnering with a UK based university. So this is a fully funded scholarship that um, a PhD student would start in the UK for one year, then will be one year or so in Melbourne, Australia and go back to the UK. Uh, and the project is around um, looking at uh, virtual reality for um, people on long duration um, space missions um, in relationship to their well being and how we can use um, humanities, culture, heritage, natural heritage um, to support that. Um, but we are basically searching for someone um, who is a space enthusiast, who uh, has a bit of um, um, preferences toward humanities 
as well as is a virtual reality designer or game designer. So those uh, expertise skills. And uh, I don't know if anyone knows anyone, um, if you could please share with me. I have someone, but I need to ask her. I was uh, telling mm -hmm. her because I saw you the information in LinkedIn and then mm -hmm. I, I asked her, but she will call you, I think it's. Maybe. Okay, perfect. Th thank you. Um, we would like to have, it would be great to have also maybe someone from psychology, but it's important that they know uh, or they have interest to develop uh, VR itself. So we have another PhD scholarship and that oh. will be AI person who will then okay. measure, measure um, emotions of uh, immersed people. So we have two um, students who will swap okay. and work together. Oh. I would like, I'm not a student, but I would give the opportunity to the students. I, I would like to participate in the emotions, I think. And the person yeah, I was that's... thinking is something in in design, no, it's more in the design, mm -hmm. but the psychology, I didn't think so about, but if you want, I would like to support also you, uh, but okay, yeah. Yeah, th thank you. Uh, we will we will collect the data in the UK and in Australia. If you're near, you're definitely welcome. Um, but the, the future is that we will um, we are currently applying for a major grant, um, and then the next data collection will be in a museum with museum visitors, which are very diverse. And then in the future, uh, we're hoping for space. Um, uh, analog missions uh, and further in microgravity. Thank okay. you very much, Gaia. Mary Louise? Uh, yeah, perhaps I can uh, contri uh, contribute something. Um, uh, we uh, from the Society for Space Culture have now a collaboration with the uh, uh, University of Düsseldorf in Germany um, uh, with, uh, with the topic um, philosophy uh, of space uh, travel um, in history and also in um, in systematic uh, pers perspectives and um, uh, in two weeks we have a, a meeting with all the participants and um, uh, the University of Düsseldorf is uh, one part university, as one university of a combination of univer universities in Europe. There's also the Uni University of Toulouse, uh, one of Denmark, one of Pol Poland, and um, and one of um, I think Sweden. Also five universities. Um, which are financed by the European um, Commission. And we want to build up something um, in the humanities uh, with, uh, with um, in, uh, space philosophy and so space culture and so on. And perhaps we can combine it to um, international um, conferences perhaps uh, from Julio in, in, in Brazil or in uh, New York. Great. Uh, I just want to add uh, one uh, recommendation. As I asked it to Julio for his uh, working groups in Brazil and so on, should anybody of us have meet, online meeting? Uh, and you want to invite me, I will held my uh, 10 minutes uh, speech about uh, 18 SDG. I am working, uh, I, I already have a page that I can show you quickly. Okay, this is our initial page on the 18 SDG initiative that will be presented at the United Nations General Assembly in the 18th of September and objectives, abstract, uh, expected outcomes, and of course, the general picture about uh, the 18 SDG in all of the other SDGs. So uh, soon we will have a form 
where it will be possible to sign this uh, uh, this thing to 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 add our signators and uh, of course i would like very much to advertise this initiative everywhere it is possible and i also recommend to you to do it to all of us uh, we i will make a, a, a general um, call to our members to do the same to advertise this page to add the signators and all this kind of thing we we need to reach september with uh, some thousand of signators on in uh, on on this initiative uh okay uh, maybe jerry you would like to to add something yes uh, thank you um let me just uh, get my notes back um firstly uh Julia, I must say that uh, what you presented, I mean, that the activities that uh, your organization is doing it is very, very impressive, I have to say. So, well yeah. done. And uh, all good luck for the future. If I can now go back to, uh, to Werner's presentation. Um, I mean, he concentrated on uh, living under low gravity on the moon and Mars and uh, explains that uh, this would need um, activities to, um, not to, to combat, but uh, to um, do exercise and, and other things to well yeah, yeah to, to combat the effect of the low gravity um adriano mentioned uh going to somewhere for a short time and then returning to to full g but so uh, i mean you certainly can't do that with mars and it would be difficult doing that with the moon as well because uh, of the cost of transporting people from um well at the most from the moon to the earth but if we had a not to uh, earth, not to earth. sorry not to earth to no. uh, rotating infrastructure ro yes or in the Moon. that was in orbit around the moon yeah but there's still the cost of getting people off the lunar surface and into orbit and uh, so it remains to be seen just how practical that would be um for the o'neill structures whether it's island one island two or island three it has always been assumed that they will rotate to provide 1G. But when I started up the space project, um, one of the first questions that I put for the, um, the team to consider was, do we actually need 1G? If they rotated slower, so we had 0.9 G or even 0.8, then there would be in, uh, certainly less stress on the structure. And so it wouldn't need as much material to build it, but it would also be less stress on the inhabitants. And uh, so that means, less stress on their um the cardiovascular system on their their muscles and so on so firstly they wouldn't need um you know that if if we had something rotating at, at that rate then uh it so it, it would be of benefit, but the question is, at what point does lowering the level of simulated gravity become 
a problem rather than a benefit? And of course, the answer to that is we don't know because we've never done it. And so we would need to carry out lower than 1G activities, um, say in Earth orbit, to get more medical data on this. And we could do that with the unit which I proposed, which we called Island Zero. And this would be a small scale uh, structure which would be in Earth orbit and depending on um, at what rate it was rotated and also uh, the length of the unit from the center. Obviously, the further out, the more um, speed that that unit, um, well, that, that part of the unit will have. And so you'd have higher gravity, whereas uh, we assumed um, that being fixed on a, um, some kind of um, line of uh, about, I think, 150 meters. So it, w it wouldn't be a complete solid thing like the ISS, but uh, we'd have individual sections um, on the end of uh, uh, lines. And by rotating that at no more than three RPM, you could get um, nine. 0.9 to 1G, but we need to do this in order to generate the, as I said, the, the, the medical knowledge and, yeah. uh, so that uh, we can then use that when going forward to properly design the full size 10,000 person uh, habitat. Yeah, we need to experiment to start. Yes. Finally. And at is... the moment, we don't have any way of doing that. But uh, with these uh, small scale units, which could also be used by other uh, organizations to carry out other kinds of research in Earth orbit, mm -hmm. um, that would help. Uh, provide the uh, the funding for that. The last yeah. thing I, that I want to say is uh, um, I'm the uh, the meetings organizer for the UK's Federation of Astronomical Societies, which is a national body which supports all the astronomy uh, clubs around the UK. And something which I do for that is organize an annual full day conference. Um, in 2024, that is our 50th anniversary. So I'm gonna be quite busy then. And uh, I'm organizing two special conferences during that period. So in order to make sure that we run those at the best possible times, I have put together a calendar uh, for the year of other events so that we don't have any clashes. And uh, I'm proposing to uh, send you a copy of this. So it includes major space events like the IAC and so on. It also has uh, all of the uh, um, the major sports events, so we don't clash with, uh, say, the Wimbledon tennis um, or the UK 
Grand Prix uh, and, and other things. Um, I also have, uh, what have I got there? Um, oh, yeah, public holidays. Right. And uh, this actually takes up <laughs> quite a lot of dates. Um, the, uh, the date that you proposed um, so, uh, earlier on is clear <laughs> of all of these. So, uh, um, as I said, I, I I, I need to update it a bit because there are various things in the UK that, that you, you, you won't be interested in, but I can send this to you. One, one question. Yeah. Do you think that it could be worth to try to present the Iceland Zero project to ESA? Did you try? Whoa. Uh, no, we, we haven't. Um, but I think to, perhaps we could try to that. Because yeah, perhaps we could look for that as um, an output from the, our uh, conference. Yeah, yeah, because we, we can have a um, a period. I, I can give a presentation on it, and we can have some discussion with a view that perhaps over the next two months, we discuss it further amongst the group and uh, if you, to put together a presentation. If you like, Lisa. yeah, we could yes. start working on that even before. I mean, if yes. you like to do to, okay. to a short abstract with yes. the, uh, presenting the, the rationale behind the, mm -hmm. the idea and uh, why it is so urgent to start experimenting with simulated gravity yes and uh, how at least a feasibility a phase a study could be made with a few hundred thousand euros not, 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 we don't need millions okay no. uh, could be made a phase a in, in ESA they used to have phase a phase yes. B, yes and then to see if uh, some investors can be found. And so on. when you have an ESA uh, phase A yeah. project, then you can start looking for investors to realize uh, the idea. So I think that it could be, it could be uh, interesting to, to, to try. And we could involve the IAF Space Habitats Committee to back these proposals. And uh, uh, yes, and maybe also someone else. We can see. Okay. So, uh, the, the, uh, one action item for you, Jerry, if you would like to yeah. short abstract. Maybe you already have it, but uh, just to 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 rethinking uh, for the agency, you know, because uh, yes, should be conceived in a, written in a, in a in a certain way that is acceptable for them yeah that's fine good so i think we made a good job this night <laughs> uh, so uh, if nothing else we can close we can adjourn uh, tomorrow morning uh, i hope i can uh, share a essential minutes of, of this meeting with uh, with Werner and Jerry, and then we can uh, uh, deliver. Everything fine? Okay. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Ad Astra. All right. Bye bye. Good night. Ad Astra. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.